showing you is we're going to be showing you how to do a sambal fried brown rice with chicken and shrimp with plenty of shallots and spring onions. So for the following ingredients that we actually need for this fried rice is first you actually need some brown rice that has actually been pre-cooked and then you need some onions, some cabbage, some lime leaf, very very nice and fragrant lime leaf, a little bit of coriander roots, you also will need a, a basic sambal sauce and then some corn, some LMP sauce, some ketchup manis and a little bit of avocado chili infused oil. After putting some avocado oil into the pan, wait for the pan to actually slightly warm up. Once it's actually been warmed up, the first thing you need to do is throw a piece of onions into it to actually hear a sizzling sound or make sure that your onions that is actually bubbles coming up from the side of the onions. Then after that, put it all in. Okay? Your pan is hot when you actually hear a sizzling sound. So that's very important. Here is the link sound from your pen. And when this has been done, very simple and easy, you can actually use a spatula, lightly fry the onions until it's actually totally softened or what we call golden brown. Very importantly, when we actually do any cooking or frying, especially Asian dishes, uh, frying your onions and garlics are actually very important steps. By being able to actually get your onions to be fully softened, you know, what it actually will reward you is actually a very sweet fragrance and it also uh, has a very nice aroma of fragrance to it. So very important, you must always make sure that your onions are actually fried to fragrance on high heat. Okay? And then to me, it's like you were seeing, John, I'm using a non-stick pan, you can actually use a metal spatula. You can actually use a metal spatula provided the spatula itself is actually not sharp. So go for one that is actually round and then for our non-stick pan, it's perfectly okay. Okay, but only thing is that uh, we do have to take away the bad habits of you know knocking and banking of it. Okay, and then so to me, it's just go gentle on it as it goes. Fry for a minute or two until your onions is actually lightly translucent or what we call softened and translucent. And once this has been done, you can actually put in your next ingredients, which is actually the white cabbage. You know, I, I have a very good time or great time actually using uh, the new Infinity Pot from Green Pants. Okay? Uh, of, you know, I've been with Green Pants for the past years. Uh, I would say this is actually one of the best pens they have ever made in a non-stick property. Okay? So to me, it's like, seriously, this is actually really a very fantastic pen to actually have back home. Once the cabbage went in, a little bit of toasted heavy, lightly sprinkled onto the vegetable. Okay, slightly toss it. Okay, fry until we have very nice fragrance of the heavy. And when it's been done, grab a little bit of yellow corn. You can use the canned one actually. Okay, the canned one is actually very sweet and nice. Okay, a little bit of yellow corn. Slightly toss the cabbage and the corn. Okay, this has been done. Create a gap in the center. Add in a little bit of chicken leg meat. Chicken leg meat. Okay, wait until the colour of the meat actually change to a whitish pale. Okay, let's cook the meat first because normally you have to put in the hardest vegetables or the hardest meat to cook first before you put in the prawns. Okay, slightly fry your chicken to cook and then Okay, the moment you see your chicken turns a pale white, okay, that is actually when the meat is actually being cooked. Okay, the next thing to put in, a little bit of fresh prawns, big prawns. Okay, 
Okay, lightly toss it in the wok for a minute or two. The moment you see your prawn actually turns a light orange, that is when the prawn is actually ready. Okay, and start your prawn sort of curl like a C. That is actually when the prawn is actually ready. Once this is ready, a little bit of LMP sauce. Get the drizzling effect, reduce it a little bit in, in the prawn. A little bit of ketchup minus. Okay, I'm getting I'm using the sweet one. And for the powerful stuff, a little bit of samba. Lightly press it along. Lightly fry it for another minute or so. And this has been done. You can actually have a very very nice sambal fried rice fragon coming up. And this has been done. Very importantly, grab two pieces of green lime leaf. Very important whenever you use a gram leaf, do remember to actually smash it. Okay? If you don't smash it, there's actually no fragrance. Just remember to actually smash it, okay, as a garnish. Okay, this will actually give the rice a very, very nice fragrance. And then grab some coriander roots, okay? Uh, normally I prefer to actually use pairing methods, okay? Just lightly pair some coriander roots onto the mix. Lightly right there. Okay, it's very nice and fragrant now. Okay, turn down the heat to a slightly medium heat, easier to control. And this is done a little bit of pre blanch long bean. Lightly toss it again. Okay, treat the vegetable and treat the, the mixture. Uh, as gentle as possible, okay? One of the things about frying in a wok and things like that, people tend to actually smash it, okay? Don't, don't do that, okay? What you should actually do is lightly use a very simple and gentle tossing method, okay? Lightly toss it, lightly cook it. Okay, when this has been done, very simple and easily, what you need to do next is, finally, okay? The hero products of the day. That is actually the brown rice. Okay, for the brown rice, do cook the night before. Okay, it makes your rice much more easier to handle. And then to me, it's like normally when I do my brown rice, uh, go for one cup water and one cup rice. Okay, and then to me, it's like what I'm actually using is actually the whole Mali fragrant brown rice, which is actually a blend. Okay, blend of brown rice. And then to me, a little bit more. Okay, the proportion of rice to the ingredients is around 50 to 50. You know, 50% are the vegetables, 50% are the rice. Okay, this will actually attribute a very beautiful fried brown rice. Okay, and this has been done very simply and very easily. Lightly toss it, keep tossing it until the rice colors are actually one very uniform colors. Okay. This will take a while, but to me, it's like one of the things about getting a good fried brown rice. Uh, basically is that do not go and smash the rice, do not do this, do not go and smash the rice, okay? Toss it, you know, lightly fry it, toss it up, okay? Let the rice loosen up, and then to me it's like, let the taste actually sit in. Okay, lastly, before you serve, plenty of fried shallots, okay? That will actually give you the fragrance. And here you go, a very simple and easy fried samba brown rice. Okay, I'm going to show you how to actually do a pan roasted salmon on the pan with some very simple ingredients like red pepper, some corn, some orange peel some lemon juice, a little bit of coriander roots, and then some roasted onions. And then a little bit of Tabasco, and then also a little bit of chili infused avocado oil. Okay, I'm actually using salmon. The reason why I'm using salmon is because salmon basically is one of the few fish that is actually one of the most hardest to actually do a pan shit or a pan roasted done very nicely. Reason is because salmon itself is actually very delicate, and then chances of you cooking a salmon and breaking it is actually very, very common. And then to me, it's like normally, uh, if you get 10% to actually do a salmon, 5% will actually cook salmon, salmon with skin, and then after cooking, the skin 
or the, sh the, the clothing will actually go soft. Lah. So to me, it's like, uh, that's the reason why we'll start off from the most difficult, which is actually salmon. Okay? Salmon, whenever you actually do salmon, uh, one very important thing to do is like, do what I'm actually doing. Get a dry towel, always tap dry the skin first. Okay, by tapping and dry the skin, it will actually prevent the skin from sticking, one of the things. The second thing is also, it will actually uh, make the skin actually a bit more crispier and much more fragrant, okay, when you actually bite it, you're going to be much more crispier. So, the very first thing you can do is get some pepper. Okay, so after the pepper has been, been done, okay, a tinge more bits of salt okay imagine when you actually do your sorting of fish okay try to leave your hands or finger higher a little bit a lot of people when they sort they will go this way when you go this way what times what happens is all the salt will be concentrated here very salty so basically the higher you go the more even you will spread okay so have to do a bit higher but when this has been done uh, you also have to sort the underside okay so you can actually see when I actually sort my salmon, I actually sort it on the wider surface. And at this wider surface, just leave it up. This is a cheat sheet, okay? A, uh, a shortcut way, but now you see, it's actually well sorted. Okay, when this is actually been done, very simple. Leave the fish to actually marinate for at least three to five minutes, okay? So as you're marinating, you can actually turn on your stove, okay? As for the stove, always remember, as I always mentioned, Pen, make sure it's clean. Co pen, co oil. Okay? Co pen, co oil. If you can actually master how to actually pen rolls or pen shit your salmon, uh, basically, if you can master salmon, okay, other fishes will not be an issue. Okay? And then you go, John, what if I'm actually using frozen fish? Okay? If you're using frozen fish, like things like dories or halibuts or sea bass and things like that, uh, for a better appearance, uh, you might want to actually lightly dust it with corn flour or plain flour. Okay, very lightly and then pep it dry. Once you pep it dry, uh, when you pan fried it, it has a very nice golden brown on the outside. Okay, so do actually put a little bit of corn flour or plain flour onto it. Okay, same thing also before I put in the fish, I have to make sure that the fish, the fish actually, once it goes in the pan, it must have a sizzling sound or you must actually see small bubbles appearing okay, on the side of the fish. Okay, then it's considered the pan is actually hot enough. Okay, this will take a while, so let's wait for a while. Normally, if you use a fire stove back home, uh, it's going to be much more faster the process. But down here, due to regulation, it means that I can't use a fire stove. Uh, a hot plate will normally take a while. It will take around two or three minutes. But to me, it's like normally back home, if you use a fire stove, less than a minute, your pan should be actually hot enough. Once your pan is actually lightly heated up with the avocado oil, okay. And what you need to do is actually always start off with the skin side first. Okay, put the fish onto the pan. You must hear a sizzling sound. You must actually see bubbles appearing by the side of the fish. That is actually to tell you the fish is actually, the pan is actually hot enough, okay? Put it on. Okay, and then one of the very important things whenever you do fish, you know, don't be too anxious or too excited that, you know, the moment you put in your fish, immediately you want to turn it around, okay? Don't worry about it. And you know, what we have here is actually a very unique uh, pan from green pan that is actually what we call the infinity range okay so basically once you put your fish in you should be able to move it okay when you actually move it it actually tells you very clearly that the pans or the fish does not stick to the pan okay so that is how fantastic the non-stick property are okay as you cook it the way to actually cook salmon basically is very simple make sure that the fish is actually cooked once it cooked once it and then after that, you know, once the fish is cooked one third, uh, the fish is cooked, it actually turns whitish in colour and then turn the other side and cook the other side whereby it cooked one third also, the other side will turn whitish also. Turn off the heat, let it sit or let it rest for at least another two or three minutes, okay, before you actually serve the fish. Okay, salmon is actually that easy to prepare. Normally, it will take around two and a half minutes to around three minutes, depending on the thickness of the fish. And then after that, you put another two minutes, three minutes, or even up to five minutes of actually resting periods. That is actually to make sure that your fish is actually cooked, whereby salmon are actually cooked, whereby it's still actually very moist and nice in the center. Okay, you can actually use a white fish fillet, like a sea bass or halibuts and things like that. But to me, it's like salmon is actually, uh, we'll start off from the most hardest, which is actually salmon. Lightly cook it, okay? You can actually see the texture of the fish 
whereby the fish start to turn whitish in color. That is actually to tell you that the fish is actually cooked. Okay, so to me, it's like cook it until it's around one third. Okay, turn the other side, cook the other side one third, and then turn off the heat, let it rest. Okay, you can actually see the white fish part start to actually form. Okay, when this has actually been done, a bit more. Okay, as you do, we turn over the other side, get it all side golden brown. And when this has actually been done, take a, a serviette or whatever, you can actually pour the oil away. One of the methods that I love to use is actually get a clean serviette and things like that. Tap away the excess oil, okay? And then to me, you say, John, this is actually the good oil from the fish and things like that. Yes, it, indeed it is the omega fats and the good oil and things like that, okay? But to me, it's like, some people even ask me, can I actually keep it to uh, stir fried vegetable, okay? Certainly you can, uh, okay? Provided you want a, a fishy vegetable, then this should be good, uh, okay? Because it do have a certain fishy smell since it, uh, so you have to be very careful with it, kind of thingy. So to me, it's like lightly dried it, okay? So using the same pot to get a bit more colors, what we're gonna do is, for today, we're gonna do something a little bit more different. You can see the very nice golden char brown on the sides and on the center. We start off with the pepper, get some pepper. Get some char pepper. Yeah. Pepper, if you actually cook it nice and char, it actually has a very beautiful. The salmon is almost cooked. Put it aside to actually rest. And then using the same pan, I'm going to do some vegetables with it. Okay, some tomatoes. Okay. Some onion. Okay, this is actually onions that actually been pre baked in the oven until totally softened. A little bit of cream pea, and then I also want some freshness from the coriander roots. Okay, but for coriander roots, one of the things you need to do is always smash it before you use. Okay, if you don't smash it, there's actually no fragrance, there's no smell. You want some very nice fragrance and smell from it. So, do actually smash it before you actually use it. Okay, so lightly fried it. Okay, last but not least, the corn, pineapple, some canned pineapple, and then some orange zest. Lightly fried it for a while. So it's actually very colorful and nice. Okay. Get ready some tinge of lime. Okay, what I have here is actually a little bit of black pepper sauce, just a, one or two small teaspoons of it for flavors. A little bit of hoisin sauce for the sweetness. Okay, lightly fried it for a while. Okay, as salmons are actually very, very strong fragrance or, you know, strong fish, I would say. Okay, so this is the take of time, put it in. Let it braise for a while. A little bit of L and P. Okay. This is basically a kind of dish that you will have back home. Okay. A pinch of lime juice. Okay. A pinch of it. A pinch of lime juice. Generously over it. Okay. And then basically what you have here is actually a very simple fried vegetable dish with your salmon. Here you go.